Are you interested in unleashing thousands of dots on the minions of hell? Look no further. Introducing the Shadow Mancer. Let's get into it. So in the gameplay above, you will see these aren't special selected rifts or, you know, nightmare dungeons, whatever you want to call them in Diablo 4. These are, you know, first tries. We're just blasting through dungeons, trying to get as much XP as possible. I've been playing personally 15 to 20 hours a day since the game came out. So this is really what we've landed on to be the best uh, at, at basically farming XP and, and killing dungeons and really even climbing dungeons. Now we're going to get into the skill tree, all, you know, everything there is to do, the gear, the stat priority, all that stuff. But before we get into everything, I want to quickly kind of give an overview of how this works, right? So this build is all about doing shadow damage uh, because of the passive shadow blight in DL4. Now, we explained this in the previous video. If you guys haven't checked out my leveling guide, go do that. But what this does is basically every single time you do shadow damage to an enemy, the 10th time will just do a proc for shadow damage. And that damage is based on the damage range of your weapon. So if you're wearing something like a really high damage two-hander, which you want to be doing in this build, it's going to give you a nice and juicy proc. You can see down here, mine at the time of this video is up to 3,600 damage, shadow damage, which scales. Now, the juicy part about this is, is the dots scale this, right? So you're going to be getting tons of dots with Course Explosion Miasma, tons of dots with Blight, tons of dots with our Bone Prison, tons of dots with our Bone Storm, and even the occasional Reap. It's all shadow damage. There's a lot of damage over time in this build, and this thing is firing off like nuts. All right, so bear with me. This is my first, uh, like, proper build guide in Diablo 4, so we might be a little all over the place. Starting out with basic attacks here, uh, we're going to use this skill called Reap. Reap is shadow damage, so it will proc your shadow blight, but we don't really care about that. Reap isn't here to do damage. We only want to cast Reap once every five seconds for this particular rune, Acolyte's Reap. It forms a corpse under the first enemy hit once every five seconds. So again, don't cast Reap more than once every five seconds. It's really just for that corpse. But that one corpse can be really, really clutch for a corpse tendrils cast or a corpse explosion. But on top of that, we're using a legendary aspect, which says basic skills grant 20% damage reduction for six seconds. So since we're casting that, you know, Reap once every five seconds to get that free corpse, we're also going to get 20% mitigation. On top of that, Reap itself will give you 15% damage reduction for two seconds. But again, that's not going to be up all the time. We don't want to be spamming Reap here. It's actually a really slow cast, as you guys can see, because our attack speed is just not scaled in this build. We don't want attack speed. Down to the core skills, we're going to use Blight for a lot of different reasons here. So Blight will shoot out a, a blob, and when it collides with something, it'll form this like weird you know, pool on the ground. And that does shadow damage and increased shadow damage over time, over six seconds. So it lasts quite a while. So again, you shoot out a Blight. It puts this circle on the ground. It's hard to see. I'd have to find something it collides with. But it's not a huge circle, but it does last for a long time. To get more value out of the circle that gets put on the ground, because we're going to get other benefits from it, which we'll talk about in just a second, we're going to use the aspect which makes Blight's defiled area when spawn pulls enemies in around the affected area. So anything that gets sort of hit or is around this will get sucked into the blob, which is fantastic. And why that's so good is a, a couple fold here, right? So one is Blight slows enemies, and that's going to come in super handy later. Two, you and your minions deal 15% increased damage to enemies in Blight. So this is going to make other skills we hit with hit harder. And it's going to make Shadow Blight procs hit harder. Now the slow comes in handy because we're going to skip down and talk about this part of the tree real quick because we're going to use something called Gloom and Terror. So Gloom says, when you damage enemies with darkness skills, they take 60% increased shadow damage from you, and your minions are up to two stacks up to three times. So it'll be 18% more damage if you're just doing darkness damage, which is great. All these skills are dark damage. But not only this, we're using a skill called Terror. So Terror gives 9% damage to who enemies are slowed, and 9% bonus damage to those who are stunned and immobilized. Now, I have a sweet necklace that pumps this up to 6, which is actually nutty. But so we want 100% uptime on those damaged enemies that are slow, and we have a couple ways to to have pretty good uptime on stun here uh, to get that double damage bonus. So yeah, I just wanted to talk on that real quick. So that Blight is in here because A, it's Shadow Damage Dot and Damage Over Time abilities are great for proccing Shadow Blight. Two, it slows, which is great for, uh, you know, proc one of Terror. And of course, anything in that uh, circle on the ground gets 15% increased damage taken. And lastly, of course, we are sucking enemies into the area. Going back up next and most importantly on this list, and you can see why I have 12 out of 5, is Corpse Explosion. So 
We're going to pick a rune on Corpse Explosion called Blighted Corpse Explosion. It makes it so when you use a Corpse Explosion, it's going to create this sweet little circle of AoE dot damage on the ground instead of just blowing up once. Now again, this thing is nutty with Shadow Blight because it's doing shadow damage over time. Also lasts six seconds, which is the same duration as our Blight. Before you guys even ask, yes, these things stack. So if I have multiple pools of Blight, every single pool of Blight on the ground will stack. If I have multiple Corpse Explosion Miasmas, yes, every single one, even if they're on top of each other, they all stack. So this thing's popping off shadow damage like nuts. Next up, we're using something that I really, really enjoy uh, with this particular setup called Bone Prison. And you might be thinking, Fluff, that's a bone skill. Like, what are you talking about? Well, we have a legendary aspect that turns Bone Prison into a, like, basically a shadow cage, right? And so you pop the Bone Prison and anything that's sort of stuck in the middle gets in this shadow damage over time, area of effect. And this thing pumps out 100% bonus damage, which is just nuts amounts of shadow damage. On top of that, it is crazy good utility to be able to trap mods you can trap treasure goblins in this thing and they'll literally just dot to death you don't even have to attack them and again it is another form of shadow damage which you're gonna see a trend here right shadow damage good more shadow blight procs now another thing with this build is or i guess another thing in diablo in general is vulnerable damage is so good so vulnerable damage main stat which is you know for this class int and crit damage are all separate multipliers there's really the only ways to ramp up your damage in Diablo 4 like crazy hard. Everything else is sort of added to damage, which isn't a waste, but it's definitely not as good as those three. So we're all about applying as much vulnerable as we really can in this particular setup. And so in this build, we have two ways of proccing vulnerable and that's on demand. We don't really need vulnerable for, for trash mods. We do need it for all leads and we do need 100% uptime of vulnerable on the leads because it just makes them melt. So with Bone Prison, we've chosen to go the ghastly bone prison, which makes them vulnerable while they're inside the bone prison. So not only do they get the crazy shadow damage over time, they get vulnerable and it just melts, you'll see. The other way we're proccing vulnerable is a skill called Corpse Tendrils. And this is part of our, that opening damage rotation. So we're gonna swipe, we're gonna get one uh, corpse form from Reap, and then we're gonna use that corpse to use Corpse Tendrils on and everything will sort of get sucked in. And it's not necessarily we need them sucked in because we're already getting like the pixeling by using Blight. Blight will suck enemies in. But more importantly, it stuns. And again, we talked on this earlier, but Terror does basically double damage, shadow damage to enemies that are stunned. So this is our means of proccing a stun. We also use Crippling Darkness, which makes darkness skills have a 15% chance to stun. And that is based on our Lucky. So that can actually go up if you scale Lucky in this build. So yeah, Core Central will suck everything in. It'll stun them, and because we chose and played Corpse Tendrils, it'll also apply Vulnerable for three seconds. So again, Vulnerable is crazy powerful in this build. Next up is kind of interesting. So we're using a skill called Bone Storm, and this is good in this build for two purposes. One is it is a crazy defensive cooldown because we're using a legendary aspect that says each time the Bone Storm damages an enemy, gain 5% of your base life for 10 seconds as a barrier, which is just basically in vulnerability in a big pack, which we desperately need in this build. So this build doesn't have any way to break stun. Stuns are, and freezes are sort of the meta of how Diablo 4, 4 works right now. It's just like you're meant to get comboed on, I think, and like you just die from status effects. In the current state of the game, Blood Mist just really sucks. So instead, if we see a, a group of elites, we're gonna, gonna go ahead and pop Bone Storm before we even run in. This will make sure that even when you're frozen, you'll be ticking them and getting barrier. And even though they're going to town on your face, you'll be basically invulnerable for the duration of the Bone Storm, which is 10 seconds. But not only that, but not only that, we're using another aspect that changes Bone Storm to be shadow damage. So again, every single time this hits, it's going to do uh, 717 in this particular setup over shadow damage over two seconds. And again, why is that good? Because of shadow blight. The more shadow damage ticks, the more chances to proc shadow blight. So we can use not only bone storm as a defensive cooldown, which is number one priority use of it, but two, we can use it as a offensive cooldown for those minions that maybe run away from the pack you can bone storm plus plus a bone prison and it'll just tick them down and you'll do a ton of damage with that and reap and really i mean i think of what a lot of builds out there struggle with is those scragglers right you'll kill a nice and juicy pack on your screen but then like one mage will run away and he's an elite and you have to kill him down and like bone storm plus bones prison or be a really good combo for that on top of that we're using a rune on on bone storm uh, it increases your damage reduction by 15% while it's active. So those two things combinate that are quite good. 
We do not pick up the crit strike chance while Bone Storm is active. And we haven't talked about this yet, but you cannot crit with damage over time abilities. So building crit, crit damage is bad, which, you know, in the one hand, it really sucks because if we can't scale crit damage, that's one of the three multipliers in this game that actually scales your damage. So we're missing out on a lot of damage. But I think that's the trade off here is that Shadow Blight will proc off your dots. And so you're getting just a ton of burst damage from Shadow. And we don't have to worry about uh, building out crit and crit damage, which is also kind of nice. And we'll talk about stat priority later. We also pick up Death's Embrace, which is just 6% more damage uh, to enemies that are close to you. We are in close range a lot of the time and 9% less damage taken to you. We also pick up Grim Harvest, which is just flat good. Every single time you consume a corpse, you get six essence. So that essence pool will come back pretty quick when you're just blowing stuff up. And that just means you can pop down uh, more blights if the fight's dragging on. But more importantly, we get fueled by death. You do 9% increased damage for six seconds after consuming a corpse. So this is basically always up because there's always consuming corpses. We also use huge flesh, uh, which gives your damage, all damage, a 12% chance to uh, spawn a corpse at the target's location. This is huge against bosses. And you can see we just absolutely melt bosses in this build. And that's doubled against bosses. So it's 24% chance against bosses. But on top of that, it also scales with lucky. So if you have any lucky on your gear, this chance goes up. And if this chance goes up, you just melt. We also use perfectly imperfectly balanced, which is just 9% more essence cost on our skills. But the only thing that costs essence is our blight. Uh, but it also comes with 50% increased damage. This will scale the dot, which is fantastic. Outside of that, and you know, probably gonna make some players sad, we are using standalone. We are using no minions in this build. Uh, in the current state of Diablo, minions aren't great. Uh, they are just too squishy. They'd actually do the shadow mages, the golem, they do pretty decent damage. Uh, they just can't stay alive, uh, basically versus anything. And when you fight, you know, a pack of 10 elites, just everything gets wiped out. And it's just not worth, especially in this build, to spec out any sort of minion life or minion damage or anything like that. So we're gonna go standalone. Uh, and on top of that, we're gonna go Memento de Mori, which is sacrificing skeletal warriors and skeletal mages increases their sacrifice bonuses by 60%. And then, so if we look at the Book of the Dead, we're sacrificing the skeletal reapers to get 15% increased shadow damage. And then we're sacrificing the cold mages to get 50% increase of vulnerable damage. And again, as we touched on, vulnerable damage is just insane. Damage scaling it is a separate multiplier. And then lastly, we're going to sacrifice the blood golem to get 10% life. You could also get 10% attack speed, but really... You don't need it. It's nice for that like initial setup on Reap. You can cast it just a little bit faster, but overall you should just go with the life. Because again, the barrier on your bone storm is based on your life pool. So you want to you do want to be stacking life on your gear. Okay, so we talked about skill and skill synergy. Let's talk about the remaining aspects that we have on our gears. The first one and the more powerful of the two, and why we've put it on our weapon, uh, is the shadow blight. Anytime the shadow blight deals damage to enemies, the next shadow blight damage within uh 10 seconds will deal 80% more damage, stacking up to five times. So you know, if you had a perfect roll, it'd be 400% more damage. And as with any dot build, you know, this stuff just ramps. And so the longer you're fighting something, the more dots that are on something, and the damage just keeps going up, and it's crazy. And the other really important one, and why we put it on your amulet, and we'll talk about that in a second, but you deal up to 180% increased damage for six seconds after the Shadow Blight key passive damages enemies 10 times. We have so many ways of proccing Shadow Damage. Our Bone Storm Shadow Damage, our Blight Hit and Blight Dot is Shadow Damage. Reap is Shadow Damage, which is, again, we're not casting a lot. Corpse Explosion Miasma is shadow damage and the damage over time is not shit. Blown Bone Prison is shadow damage. So we have tons of ways of proccing shadow damage. So this thing is up a lot of the time, which is 180% increased damage, which is just nuts. Now, because those are our two most powerful aspects, right? We want to put them on your, on your weapon and your amulet. We're going to put the more powerful one, the key passive 10 times uh, on our weapon because that's how you get the most power out of an aspect. And then the second most power of your aspects comes from an amulet. So that's where I put this, the other Shadow Blight passive on our amulet. Now, outside of that, uh, what this build also sort of revolves around is a unique called Howl From Below. So instead of corpse explosions detonating immediately, it'll summon a volatile skeleton that chases an enemy down and explodes. And it also increases the corpse, and it also gives corpse explosion its own damage multiplier uh, up to 40%. I wouldn't say this is a required unique. It definitely makes the skill perform a lot better because again, you have ways of sort of pixeling mobs on top of you, right? You have uh, Blight will suck enemies in on top of the Blight. You have the Bone Prison even, even pixels enemies. You have Corpse Tendrils, the pixels enemies. And Pixel is just you know making all enemies go into one spot. So it's not like it's unplayable without this, but holy crap, this just increases the quality of life of Corpse Explosion in general. These things will chase enemies down. You can also use corpses that are sort of 
left in the last room and bring them in to do damage if a elite is really particularly difficult to fight but yeah it's also its own separate multiplier for course explosion so it makes course explosion damage go up so uh yeah the how from below gloves are just nutty for this particular setup now this all sort of comes together so if we see a pack of mobs come in we shoot that pool of blight we'll swing once we'll put down the corpse tendrils they'll all get sucked in and then we start corpse explosioning them down so there's a bit of a rotation but once you get it down it is nutty now with paragon there's a lot you can do here but we sort of landed on something that i believe uh will be a great way to start this out but of course you know stay tuned to my stream you know, if we find out anything that could be a little bit better we'll of course be constantly changing this to find the absolute main max of how to get the most out of this board but for now this is a pretty pretty solid base that we've spent a lot of time on so first this Paragon board will be in the description below, but I wanted to quickly touch over the overview of it here. First up, we're just going to go right. We're going to get that flat damage and flat life because again, flat life is better for our bone storm and flat damage is just good. And we're going to work our way up around to get the 100 uh, armor and the 10 intelligence. And you can see here we've taken this like kind of weird route to get there and I'll explain that. But we've taken this rare glyph called a control, which basically says... Every five int you purchase in range will increase the damage you deal to crowd-controlled enemies. And crowd control in Diablo 4 is a lot of different things. It's like chill, it's slow, it's stun, it's freeze, it's like everything. So because we have basically 100% uptime on slow, this makes this very good. And of course, we have a lot of uptime on stun between the shadow damage proc and corpse tendrils. So that makes it doubly good because the additional bonus says you and your uh, minions deal 10% increase damage to... Uh, the enemies are slowed and 20% increase the damage is stunned. So quite good power, uh, but you need 40 int to sort of unlock that second bonus. That's why we've chosen this weird route here. We come and pick up the 10% damage, the 10 intelligence. We pick up the damage nodes. We pick up the additional armor nodes. Why not? And we started going into the next tree. Now, I would recommend your second tree be a uh, flesh eater. Consuming five corpses increases the damage by 40% for six seconds. This is just going to be good regardless of what build you pick make this your second board, and then sort of respec your boards later. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're just gonna go through the, the boards that we've chosen. Uh, we're gonna come into the Shadow with Wither Legendary board. So your Shadow damage over time effects have a 5% chance to deal 50% bonus damage each time they deal damage. This chance is increased by 1% and 2.5% bonus damage for each 50 willpower you have. So this makes willpower an, a secondary main stat. Uh, it's int is a great main step but wisdom becomes a slow close second so stacking wisdom can be great so anytime you're pathing here you know seeing wisdom as, or willpower as an option i'm sorry i'm saying wisdom seeing willpower as an option uh is really really strong and a lot of the shadow damage glyphs will require willpower uh to function and so that it sort of stacks on the way to that we pick up this damage over time reduction for enemies which is fantastic so if you just have a dot on enemy they do less damage to you so there's 100 uptime we're going to creep that into the shadow damage over time node obviously self-explanatory and then we creep up into shadow damage and uh getting the glyph called uh abyssal abyssal will make all non-physical modifiers go up in the radius so if we have shadow damage here which we do on this node that makes the shadow damage go up and we also have a defensive rune up here that says shadow resistance and then we start shadow resistance go up and so our shadow res is actually really good in this build so if you see nightmare dungeons that say monsters deal shadow damage you don't have to worry about it and we sort of pick these weird pathing nodes because we're using the abyssal glyph which needs 25 decks to get the secondary effect which is you and your minions deal 10 percent increased damage next up we move on to the board we talked to earlier flesh eater we come up and we get the damage to injured enemies. We try to avoid the crit strike damage because, again, we don't crit in this build. But we have to pick up one node that's crit strike damage on the way, uh, which isn't great. But, you know, it's just one paragon point wasted. We come down all the way into uh, damage to elites. And this one's huge, right? Uh, and, and resistance to elements. And we use a glyph here called sacrificial. This one's pretty cool. Any uh magic nodes in the area go up to 144 percent bonus so this means the nodes that say damage to elites basically get a ton of value so we can see this one in game my uh sacrificial isn't leveled all the way yet but you can see the the secondary nodes 17 damage to elites instead of the base which was eight so getting all three nodes here that say increase damage to elites because they're magic nodes they'll all get juiced up like crazy which is really nice same thing down here all res nodes will get popped off really really well which is fantastic plus the willpower node like that's no slouch 
uh, willpower again is our secondary stat here so those go up as well moving on from there we go into the uh, scent of death node with at least two corpses nearby you gain 50 percent damage reduction with no corpses you'll 50 percent increased damage so this is just always going to have a good effect whether or not it's damage or mitigation on the way in we pick up damage to uh healthy enemies it's got that crit strike damage on there again we don't want that but it's part of the node and we don't have to pick up the crit strike damage luckily to get there but it's just on the way to the actual legendary node then we're going into uh this particular area the glyph we choose is scourge every five willpower will increase your shadow damage over time and your enemies deal increased damage to uh shadow damage over time effects so we want to pick up as much willpower in this area as we can so that's why we've sort of path like this we also pick up the armor we pick up the damage to injured enemies and then next up we path into the uh bone board but we sort of avoid all the bone stuff as much as we possibly can and we pick up the exploit glyph which is one of the better glyphs that we can get because again it's vulnerable damage vulnerable damage is its own multiplier and to get that bonus vulnerable damage we need to pick up 25 decks and sort of that's why we've packed out like this we pick up the resistance to all we pick up the uh, bone skill damage which sucks but we have to get those two uh, dexterity nodes right next to it and then lastly we jump down into the bloodbath board but of course we ignore the bloodbath and we go straight to the glyph which gives us uh, darkness. And for every five willpower purchase in the area, you'll deal increased shadow damage. Whenever your enemy is deal increased shadow damage. And then the secondary on that, uh, whenever we deal shadow damage, they deal less damage to us. And so we sort of pick and path for as much willpower as we can in this radius, picking up this nice little healing received node, but mostly to pick up these willpower nodes. All right, so stat priority. There's sort of a lot to talk about here. So I sort of put in them into tier lists. Uh, vulnerable will be rank one. Anytime you can see vulnerable and you can get on a piece of gear, get it. Cause again, it's its own separate multiplier. Intelligence is also the same. If you can get it, it's really good. However, on some slots, it's not as good as other things. Same thing with willpower. Willpower is good. It scales our shadow damage, but if you can get it other things, it's going to be better. And we'll, we'll touch on that when we talk about piece by piece and then cooldown reduction. If you can see it anywhere, which I think at this point in the game, it's really only on offhands and necklaces and helmets as far as i can tell but if you can get this get it because we have uh, three skills that have cooldown on them outside of that the top four damage ones would be shadow damage darkness skill damage damage over time shadow damage over time these four will always be up they are additive bonuses but that doesn't mean that they're bad after that all of these work as well damage to crowd controlled enemies damage to stun enemies damage to close enemies however they are situational even though they have really, really high uptime, these have 100% uptime. So these are tier one. These are tier two. Tier four, I would say, is actually the skill Lucky. Because Lucky does do a couple things for this build. Number one, again, we talked about earlier, Hued Flesh gets more corpses if your hit chance, if your Lucky chance goes up. So that's nice. And secondly, Crippling Darkness, the chance to stun enemies, also goes up with Lucky hit. So it's not a total waste if you hit Lucky. In fact, we might even gear for it at some point. I don't know. The problem is, is Lucky is a base stat on wands and wands are one hand weapons. So in the way that Shadow Blight works is one hand weapons just uh, will never be as good. So we probably won't spec for Lucky, but that's just something to keep in mind. As far as defense goes, you know, HP is always going to be flat good because again, we get higher Bone Storm procs, uh, Bone Storm shield barrier procs because of our HP pool. And then it just makes you feel more tanky in general to have a higher HP pool. Flat damage reduction is going to be good in all situations. There's also damage reduction versus uh, dotted enemies, which we'll see here. If we open up our gear, what we rolled on there, damage reduction from enemies that are affected by shadow damage over time. That's always going to be basically up. And then damage reduction from close enemies uh, is also a good stat for this. But again, that would be a tier under just flat damage reduction, flat damage reduction from dot. I mean, damage reduction from close would sort of be the next tier. So with that out of the way, let's talk about each piece. So with a helmet, you can get cooldown reduction so that's going to be rank one you can also get intelligence willpower you can get something called all stat and again because willpower and intelligence have really high value for you all stat isn't bad typically you want to sort of avoid getting resistance on gear on a chest there's a ton of things you can roll on a chest uh, we got basic damage reduction we got life here we got main stat int and then damage reduction from close enemies pretty great chest on the gloves it is a, a unique so you don't get to pick what's on it but we get lucky hit which we get it gives us value which we talked about just a minute ago we get a lucky hit a 20 percent chance to stun which again stun is really good value in this build because of 
uh, the terror passive. We get corpse kill attack speed, which is nice because we're firing off corpse explosions all the time. And then the downside of this, and I think this is the intent of Unique is to have this downside, is a 25% chance of fear. And that also scales with your lucky. So that really sucks. You'll notice sometimes mobs run away from you and it really just messes with your positioning. But that's just a trade-off of this glove being so good. On pants, this is a big one. So you can get plus corpse explosion on your pants. So that's priority one. Uh, you can get damage reduction for enemies that are dot, damage reduction for enemies that are close, and you can get plus ranks to bone prison. This is great because it'll take down the cooldown. Every point you spend in bone prison will take down the cooldown of bone prison. So getting plus to, to bone prison is really, really good. This one we've sort of maxed. These pants are actually just insane. There's a implicit on pants so this one says your movement speed will go up if you use a potion there's one that says you get a barrier i think that that would probably be the best in slot on boots uh the rank one would be movement speed rank two would be movement speed after killing an elite and on this we've chosen willpower and intelligence because again those are both great stats for us on the weapon as we touched on earlier, main stat and vulnerable are rank one, rank two. Unfortunately, we, the other two stats are damage to stun and damage to close, which are great. Like, I shouldn't say unfortunately. Like, those are good, but they're situational, right? The things that we really like are damage over time, shadow damage. Uh, those are really, really great. And of course, for the gems on this, we put more damage over time inside of it. Same thing with uh, the, the armor. You want to put more uh, red gems, life percent gems. For necklace, I honestly think that terror will be the best in slot because terror is just so much damage. I also think corpse, all corpse skills will be best in slots. So this necklace is just actually nutty. Uh, movement speed is something you can get on a necklace as well. This will sort of help you keep up with other people and it'll also help you fly through dungeons. Unfortunately, this rolled total armor, which isn't great. We can get damage reduction here or you know damage increases. So getting armor isn't fantastic, but it's not a slouch because we do get a lot of armor through this uh, imprint. Rings, again, vulnerable damage you can hit here. You can hit damage over time. You can hit shadow damage. Those are probably the top three. And then I would go with HP. I, I think that there's a lot of value to having life on some of these. So this one you can see has 750 life. So a perfect ring to me would probably be vulnerable damage, life, shadow damage, and then damage over time. Those would probably be the top four for me. But put a diamond inside of those. It just gives eight all res at a high level. Now, a couple things to note here. And a couple things we just wanted to mention sort of at the end of this. I will say that... Like Skeletal Mages, Shadow Skeletal Mages are really good and they have a rune that makes them stun. However, in the current state of the game, the Shadow Mages just die, right? So that you can't keep them up ever and you're wasting corpses, recasting them. But the amount of shadow damage that they apply and they proc a lot of Shadow Blight themselves is quite good. So, you know, this might be a consideration for some of you guys that really like minion stuff. I'll also say that the Iron Golem with the vulnerable hit can be a decent option of uh, if you don't like bone prison, I personally, I think bone prison is a better option, but you could replace bone prison uh, aspect and do something that has more damage and replace him with the golem. The golem is nice because he'll also stun with his slam attack. So anytime you make his active effect go off, he'll vulnerable and stun. But again, in the current state of the game, the golems just don't stay alive in, in high tier torment for. But the other reason I kind of like the golem is because the... Uh, Bone Storm actually goes off on your Golem as well. So you get, again, because this is offensive for us since it's shadow damage, that's pretty nice. So the Golem gets a Bone Storm, you get a Bone Storm. So having these two together is actually pretty cool, but it's not really worth specking in to any kind of minion damage here. And we're definitely not gonna spec in the mini damage on gear. So we sort of foregone all minions, but something to think about if you guys are into minions and you want, you can alter this build a little bit uh, for your own benefit. But that's going to do it for this video. I know that was a lot to cover. And you know, I'm sorry if it was all over the place. This is my first D4 build guide. It feels really, really weird to have it finally here. But let me know. What do you guys think? Uh, this is pretty well thought out. It took me a lot of time. This is what we've been blasting with. It's been really successful so far. Uh, if you guys have ideas you would like to throw at me, just make sure to put them in the comment section below or stop by the stream. You know, We're always messing with this or messing with some more other Necker build. But do expect more Necro builds in the future. I hope this helps some of you guys get into the end game and really start to scale and climb the Necromancer. This is pretty fast, pretty juicy. The best thing I've seen so far. But again, do expect more Necro content in the future. If you guys like the video, drop a like. Subscribe. Come over to Twitch. Ask your questions. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date on anything game related. And follow me on Instagram if you like IRL content. But until next time, boys, stay fluffy. Peace out.